So thanks so much, everybody, for joining us for Outbound Lead Generation Part 3 by the Host Broker and eBridge Marketing Solutions. You might have seen the first two parts, the first of which featured myself and uh, Colin Dowling, who's on our team, which and we were talking about outbound lead generation. Part two was uh, talking about uh, the type of ROI that you can expect from lead generation. And today's presentation is going to be really interesting as we're talking about uh, lead generation, specifically as it applies to uh, landing pages. Oops. So you might be familiar already with my boss, Hartland Ross from the Host Broker. Hartland uh, has been doing the Host Broker uh, for, for quite a while now, and it actually spawned out of our other business, which is eBridge Marketing Solutions. And the Host Broker is a brokerage for MSPs, web hosts, IT service firms, and the, and the companies that play in the IT services space. Uh, so we've been uh, putting together buyers and sellers of companies for over 15 years. And if you are interested, please visit thehostbroker.com where a free evaluation is available. You may also be familiar with me. My name is Devin Rose and I am the Vice President of Digital Marketing for eBridge Marketing Solutions. Uh, we're a boutique marketing agency that serves many of the same types of businesses that the host broker does, so IT service firms. Uh, we've been doing this for over tw 20 years. I've been doing it for uh, for seven years. And uh, so we're experienced in this space and understand the sort of uh, marketing tactics and strategies that work for, uh, for B2B technology companies and those that don't. Uh, we are a full service marketing agency and you can find uh, more information on our website, which is www.ebridgemarketingsolutions.com. And we're pleased to be joined today by Jason Park, who is my colleague at eBridge Marketing Solutions and our web designer slash developer and also an accomplished digital marketer in his own right. And Jason, did you want to take a, a, a moment to talk a little bit about yourself? Uh, for sure. So uh, I'm originally out east and uh, from Toronto, uh, moved to BC about 10 years ago uh, and started up and basically um, uh, have done web development and uh, digital marketing for over 15 years. I started off as a graphic designer way back when. Uh, so I have uh, design um, experience uh, as well as uh, business experience. So what I like to, to do is uh, marry the two and uh, hopefully I can uh, speak to business goals and, and express them through design. Um, uh, so digital marketing has been a, a passion of mine for a long time and trying to get uh, more leads to uh, websites uh, and such. And that's uh, been my uh, hobby for a while. Um, I'm also big on pop culture and comic conventions. So if you have any uh, um, questions about movies and stuff like that, uh, I would love to chat. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, I think I'll bring it back to Devin and uh, we'll get going with uh, our uh, lead, uh, presentation. Sure, and if you don't mind, uh, I'll, I'll apply a segue here. And uh, we were talking, Jason, earlier, and I didn't realize that in a, in a previous life that you had been a publisher of uh, comic books yourself. And um, I, I think that kind of ties into our, our presentation a little bit today because uh, one of the things about landing pages is you want to tie it into your brand story, and uh, you know storytelling is becoming more and more important in marketing. So um, certainly having that uh, background would be beneficial for today's discussion as well. Oh, for sure. Okay, so let's get into it. What are landing pages for and, uh, and when should they be used? So from a broad stroke, a landing page is a page that you should be using uh, in, in advertising campaigns. And what are they for? Well, the main thing that landing pages are for, and at least in my opinion, is, is going to be in relation to conversions. Um, Jason, how do you see it? Yeah, so a landing page is for when you have a, sp a specific goal or offering in mind uh, and to attract uh, new customers with. That's, yeah. And, um, and so when should landing pages be used compared to like a regular web page? Yeah, so a regular web page uh, usually has more than one call to actions on, every, on the page. Uh, where the user, the visitor can uh, click on many different areas. A landing page is for a, a specific action. You usually have only one call to action there. So it could be either to um, uh, contact, uh, for B2B, contact the uh, sales rep for a demo. Uh, for B2C, it could be buy now. It could be uh, to download uh, a, a PDF file and such. So it, it's usually linked to one action. Gotcha. 
So it's it's if I'm if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, landing pages are for advertising campaigns, and uh, and that's when they should mainly be used. Um, so maybe we can contrast with our next slide here. Uh, what are landing pages are not meant to be used for? Yeah, so um, they're not meant to be used for SEO. Um, the reason being that they are they typically come with uh, no navigation on the page, ideally. And they're not really uh, meant to be uh, found um, using uh, using search. It's uh, typically created specifically for uh, advertising campaigns. Um, so, for example, if you have a Google ad or a Facebook ad uh, that has an offer to it, it will link to that specific landing page. It won't be found um, in the navigation of the main website. So if I go to the website, I'm not going to be able to find it. But if I go through, uh, click through from an advertising campaign, I'm going to land on it. That's the that's the idea, right? Yeah, and it could be a a, a, um, a ad. It could be from an e letter campaign uh, as well. Gotcha. And so, what makes a, a good landing page? What separates the the good landing pages from the bad ones? Yeah. So. In the end, you really have to keep the, the audience in mind and, and, and who you want to target. So figure out your persona or the target market that you want to um, attract. Uh, understand their pain points. Uh, and the best way to build it out is to have a unique selling proposition uh, right at the top and emphasize the benefits of your offer or, your, or provide value to the person visiting the page. Um, that would make a, a ideal landing page for them. The more relevant, the more words that you use that addresses their, their pain, uh, the more likely they will click or fill out the form for the offer that they're looking for. And in terms of the content that goes on a landing page, does it tend to be shorter or longer? Do you want more content or less content? That's a good question. Um, it depends on what you're trying to achieve so and what... Uh, uh, what uh, where the visitor is uh, in the in the funnel. So if you're trying to attract customers that haven't seen your product or our service before, who don't know you uh, you exist really, but you've attracted them through an ad. Um, uh, typically, it would be a longer page uh, that has more information about who you are, how you can help them. Um, if it's something where they already know about you and your business. Uh, and you've and they've they've visited your website before. It could be a shorter page uh, that's more offer specific. Makes sense. So you want to have some sort of relevancy to the context of the person who's who's finding the page, uh, figuring out where they are in the sales cycle, and, and tailor the content around that. Um, it seems to me that's a really good, good strategy. Are there any other um, elements that come to mind for, for what makes a good landing page and what separates a good landing page from a bad landing page? Yeah, uh, more uh, going to, into actual landing page specifics, um, having a, a great hero image that gives um, uh, a positive feeling, uh, listing benefits right above the fold, um, having a call to action above the fold, now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the actual lead generation form above the fold. Um, you could have that there or a button that leads to it near the bottom, that anchors near the bottom of the page. Um, having some sort of sh social proof helps uh, in terms of testimonials or uh, listing how many people are using your, let's say if you have a SaaS software, how many people have signed up for it. Um, and making sure that you have a, a good um, call to action as well. Um, uh, more specific, specifically, if you use submit, submit, it may not be as enticing as using uh, uh, words that say, uh, yes, I want to um, please uh, send me this offer. Right. Be, be direct with your, be, your call to action and, and yeah, exactly. get right to the point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it goes back to the pur purpose of landing pages in general, and we touched on this already, but if the purpose is really to improve conversion rates, you want to get the person's information, um, especially if you've paid to get them to your website in an advertising campaign, um, you've paid to get them there. So you should feel somewhat entitled to try to get their, their contact details or to encourage them um, to complete the call to action of your landing page. So 
Uh, and I mentioned this because sometimes I know when I'm talking to tech companies and Jason, maybe, I don't know if you've had the same experience, but I'd be curious about your thoughts. But I find that tech companies sometimes are apprehensive to be direct in their marketing. They like to be a little bit softer, um, which is smart when you're dealing with selling to technical people because technical people don't like pushy salespeople. Um, but I, I do think there's a balance to be struck. And on something like a landing page, you do need to make sure that you are being aggressive and going after what you want. Obviously, you don't want to be rude or anything, but don't be scared to have a call to action that is direct and to the point. Yeah, and you'll be surprised that uh, people actually appreciate that because uh, uh, usually people that have found your landing page, have found your ad, um, are actually, um, they actually have purchase intent or, you know, in very, they want to, they want to find out more about your business and uh, being very direct and, um, and uh, specific really helps. There's a lot of noise out there. So the more uh, simplified and clear uh, the call to action is, uh, the better conversions that you'll get. Yeah, I mean, and I imagine even sometimes people would come to your your page who might normally have disclosed their contact information, but maybe you have too much content on it, or maybe the call to action isn't obvious enough, and maybe they get distracted, right? You know, that's another thing you mm -hmm. want to capture the person, you know, strike while the iron's hot to use a cliche. Uh, so I think that's an important part of a landing page too. So, you know, obviously uh, eBridge, um, we specialize in B2B marketing and especially for, for technology companies. Um, and the B2B landing pages uh, have a different goal than, than B2C landing pages where if we're selling to consumers. Uh, Jason, how do you feel, uh, how, how would you characterize the, the main differences between a B2B landing page and a B2C landing page? For sure. Um, so let's talk a bit more about uh, B2C. So in terms of B2C, usually uh, the typical call to action would be uh, to uh, either sign up to the mailing list or, or uh, sign up for a uh, specific offer. Um, so uh, usually the form on that page would be very simple. It could be as simple as uh, name, email, and then submit. Um, so the information, the goal of B2C is usually just to obtain that email address and then they could uh, further uh, send them marketing um, information or an offer that you to fulfill the promise of the landing page. Uh, for B2B, usually communication is to uh, qualify them as a uh, MQL, a marketing qualified lead. Uh, so then you can send them uh, to your sales team to further close the deal. So in B2, in B2C, uh, it could be the deal can be closed as quickly as a buy now button on the landing page and they can purchase online for B to B to B it's uh, typically involves speaking with the sales staff. So um, the call to action could be, you know, fill out this form, which can be a longer form. Uh, and that's actually uh, a good thing uh, for B to B it's because uh, you want to make sure that you have someone that's serious uh, and has interest in your business. Um, and, so the goal for B2B is usually get a demo, uh, book a demo, uh, call, contact our sales team for pricing and things like that. And that way you can actually send them to your sales department to actually close the deal. So that's the difference between B2B and B2C. Right. Yeah. And uh, you alluded to this, but uh, you know, this, the, the B2B, it's you, you capture their contact information and typically there's nurturing from, from the sales team that, uh, you know, nurture those leads until they're ready to speak to the sales team. And yeah, that, I, I totally agree. So let's talk about a specific example. And this is a landing page that um, uh, uh, is an example that I uh, got from uh, Unbounce's samples. So we'll talk a little bit about Unbounce on the coming slides, but th it's a good uh, good landing page tool. And this is an example of a B2B landing page. So um, I'm thinking we can just walk through the various elements here. So at the top of the page, um, you know, as Jason alluded to before, you have, uh, you know, a fair, a short amount of text that's above the fold that gets right to the point about the value proposition. And then on the right hand side of the page, we have a contact form, which, you know, in typical B2B fashion, not only is requesting the email, but also requesting job title uh, and, and further contact details. Uh, Jason, what else are you seeing uh, from the screenshot at the top of this landing page? Yeah, for sure. Like right off the, right off the bat, uh, you'll notice there's no navigation along the top. Again, it's to um, 
remove any other, uh, I guess you call it leakage uh, from leaving the, uh, the landing page. So really there's only one thing you can do, which is to fill out the form. And that uh, usually drives a better conversion. Um, yeah, after, right after the uh, value proposition in the title, there's a short paragraph uh, and also some bullet points in terms of the, the benefits of, of what uh, uh, you're offering. And, and, and basically the reader sees this as, as uh, benefits to them and what value they get out of it from the perspective of what they need. So the more you address their pain points and their needs and saying, uh, if you watch this webinar, this can address the, you know, um, these solutions, uh, the, the better uh, conversions that you'll get. Yep. And uh, I want to elaborate a little bit about uh, what you brought up about the, there not being a top navigation bar there. So I think that's a main difference that um, separates landing pages from normal pages. And I think it's a little bit counterintuitive why that is in place to people who aren't familiar with landing pages, because you know, it's generally speaking best digital marketing practices to have interlinking on your website for SEO purposes. We're taught this as marketers. And I think it's pretty common sense that you want to link to the relevant pages when necessary in your website. And that includes having a good, you know, laid out top navigation so people can find the information they want. So it's, it's quite a change from that thinking for a landing page. Uh, but it, it goes back to like, what's the purpose of a landing page? It's to get conversions. So if you were to have the top navigation at the top of the page, that's just giving people options to, uh, to do things that aren't what you want them to do. All we want them to do is enter their contact information and click register. We don't want to give them any other options that they could procrastinate on or, you know, navigate the site. No, we've, already, we've paid to get them to this page through an advertising campaign and uh, we are entitled to their contact information. Uh, so that's why we have the singular call to action without the, uh, the top nav. Yeah, and I think the key word there is paid. Um, since you're paying for them um, to get to this page, um, you know you want to see a some sort of ROI on your advertising efforts. Um, if you're using a landing page at more of the top of the funnel uh, of trying to build awareness, that might not be the right strategy to use because you're paying uh, for them to come in here. Yeah. And another side benefit to mention here, and this isn't the main reason to use landing pages, but it is a side benefit, is it, um, by having a more direct connection between the advertising campaign and them disclosing their contact information, you're better able to track results of your campaigns. So let's contrast that with a different situation where maybe if you sent them to your homepage instead, and then they click on a, you know, maybe they click on a few pages, maybe they navigate away, maybe they come back tomorrow, they go to your contact us page and they finally reach out to you, you know, um, it's going to be difficult to track that contact us form back to, uh, to a, the advertising campaign that first introduced them to your website. But if we have only like, in this case, one step in between someone landing on your webpage and disclosing their contact information, um, even the most basic conversion tracking tools are going to be able to measure that accurately. Um, so it's, it's a big benefit for, for companies who are especially doing advertising at scale where, you know, there's, there's room to A-B test and optimize and things like that uh, to have that, uh, that measurability. So that, that's another side benefit. <clears throat> and so, um, Jason, you, you mentioned earlier about uh, having a nice header uh, hero image. And it occur, you know, occurs to me that not everyone might not know what a, what a, a hero image is. So uh, do you mind just uh, talking about what's the hero image in this photo here? Sure. So it's um, usually, typically, a large image that's above the fold. Uh, above the fold means before anyone needs to scroll down from the page. So when the page first loads. Uh, in this case, uh, they have a hero image uh, behind the copy. Uh, that shows uh, someone in, uh, I guess, in a restaurant or a cafe or something. Cafe, yeah, or cafe or something. So, yeah, something relevant to to your business. Showing people would be an ideal uh, image. And yeah, and so for this one, it, it, I'm not sure it's the best image. I mean, I think it looks nice, but I don't know if like these look like students. I don't know if students are going to be um, the target market for uh, for a billion dollar revenue company. So. That might be a constructive criticism here is mm -hmm. that while it looks nice, it's not super identifiable to the target market. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also not a big fan of the white text over the guy's white t-shirt, but that's kind of yeah. picky. 
Yeah, it's a little bit hard to, harder to read. So any kind of um, friction, uh, such as you know having to squint or or you know just being able to read the copy, in, in, uh, will reduce the amount of conversions on your page. Some people just might not like that style, and they'll uh, just click away. Uh, and that's why uh, we also encourage A/B testing, uh, meaning. Um, having different versions um, of uh, some sort of elements on your landing page, if possible. Totally agree. So let's move a little bit further down the landing page here, because landing pages do tend to have, um, um, you know, they tend to be longer pages. And so the second kind of blocking section that we have below the hero image slash uh, contact form is some testimonials. And I wanted to point this out for B2B in particular. Um, you know, testimonials are huge. They lend to so social proof and you know, social proof is, is really important in B2B because it's such a relationship driven thing. So um, I, I like that this landing page has that. Um, a note for our MSP clients though, um, you have to be cautious about put disclosing your, uh, your testimonials on your website. And um, there's unfortunately in today's uh, ransomware world, um, uh, a tactic that ransomware people have been using is to go onto MSPs websites and look at their testimonials, knowing that um, the companies who are listed uh, have a relationship with the MSP. So the MSP is going to uh, be on the hook to try to, you know, fix the situation. Um, and, you know, there's, they're more likely to get uh, the ransom out of the MSP than they would be if they went after like a, a random small business or something. So, um, just be careful with your testimonials. Uh, you might want to not disclose the company name. Um, you might maybe only want to use the first name for the testimonial. I would also even suggest doing a reverse image search on the photo to make sure that, you know, it's not the person's like LinkedIn photo. That would be easy to, very easy to identify. Because um, we've heard some horror stories from MSBs who've had this problem um, to the extent that, um, uh, I've, I've heard that for, uh, for the like governments who are put out an RFP for, um, for, you know, managed services. Um, and then the RFPs that come back are, are the proposals that come back are, are public information because they're for a government. If those proposals had testimonials on them, the ransomware guys are going after those. So that's, that's how, how granular they're getting. Um, so it, it's definitely a serious problem. I want to take some, a few minutes to talk about it. Um, it's actually a, a problem that we're trying to work on a solution for, um, but um, it, it's tricky for now. So I think the best thing to do is just not to disclose the person's full name and their company name. Um, and then just at the very bottom of the page too, you know, a, a typical element that you'll find in, in landing pages is at the very bottom, there's a strong call to action. Um, so Jason, what do you think about this, this call to action? Contact us today. Uh, yeah. I think it's uh, it's very specific. You know, the more specific, the better. Uh, this most likely will click back, uh, either go to the uh, contact page or click or anchor right back up to the uh, the form uh, on this page. Ideally, it would anchor right back up so people would stay on this page. And again, there's only one uh, one action that you want people to take. What are some other call to actions that uh, B two B marketers could consider here? Uh, in terms of the co the the copy itself, like yes. says, contact us today. Um, yeah, book a demo is a typical one. Uh, uh, contact uh, our sales team uh, is a good one as well. For for MSPs, it could be um, free evaluation or, mm -hmm. or you know or you know um, free security audit if that's something that you offer. Um, another one I've seen recently that I quite like is Let's Go. Um, it's really short and to the point. Um, uh, you know, it's a t terminology that's being used more and more in the like, sports context. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, th that's one I like as well. But generally speaking, the, the characteristics of the text that you should put on your call to action is it should be short to the point and it should pertain to a, a specific action. Um, so, contact us today certainly meets that criteria just fine. So which tools can be used to make landing pages? And Jason, we already mentioned hubs, or sorry, um, uh, Unbounce and Passing mm -hmm. here. Uh, do you mind elaborating a little bit about Unbounce and perhaps mention a couple other tools that might be good for, uh, for landing page creation? Sure, so uh, Unbounce is um, a uh, online software that's specifically designed 
for landing pages for a lot of companies. And uh, one advantage that it has uh, is that it's very easy to design through there and uh, it has some great analytics uh, tracking be behind it. Um, some other, other um, software that's out there uh, or sites that are out there that can help you with landing pages are uh, Instapages, um, HubSpot has a, a great uh, landing page designer, uh, Squarespace also, if you want to use uh, an easy page builder, that's another option. Uh, most sites though are built on WordPress um, so uh, you can um, use your own uh, uh, page builder or template. They usually have um, some sort of template for a landing page that doesn't have a top or, or bottom navigation that you can integrate into your site. Um, one advantage of using WordPress or your actual um, site itself to design a landing page is uh, all the, um, the pages are sitting within your URL uh, which, makes, which uh, makes it easier for uh, tracking conversions and goals in uh, your Google Analytics. Um, I believe if you use Unbounce or some other pages, they'll, they'll be physically on a different URL, which makes it just a little bit harder in terms of uh, tracking. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, there there's probably for most companies, I would say that, that there would be a variety of options that might make sense in terms of what tool to use. Um, so for instance, you mentioned HubSpot, you know, if you use a HubSpot landing page, the benefit is going to be uh, that, it, you know, it's going to tie into everything that HubSpot offers in terms of automation and lead scoring and all that. So maybe you already have the contact in your system and they're coming a second time. Well, you know, you can, you can incorporate that into your lead scoring and, and know that, that person is a, is a really hot lead. So, you know, if you're using a CRM like, like that, or sorry, a, a marketing automation tool like HubSpot, um, it probably makes sense to use their landing page tool. Um, and another factor too is these, some of these other tools that Jason mentioned, uh, the unbounces of the world. There are um, software as a service fees associated with those. Uh, so for instance, unbounce starts at about $80 per month. So, you know, it's not breaking the bank, but uh, you know, as the way uh, software as a service tools go, they tend to, uh, you know, they tend to add up the more of them you have. So it's something to be mindful of um, for, you know, Using a WordPress and a plugin to create uh, the landing pages within WordPress likely is going to be the most cost effective option. Um, and as Jason mentioned, it's easiest to get the basic tracking incorporated out of the box with those. Um, you might not be able to get quite as nice designs as maybe with Unbounce or with HubSpot, but uh, um, or at least that's my assumption. Maybe Jason, what are your thoughts on that? How, how does, is there, is there a, a variety of different quality from these tools or can you expect the same quality or what are your thoughts? Um, quality wise, WordPress has come a long way. There's a lot of, uh, um, designs out there and that, uh, um, are, can be as comparable as to Unbounce's quality. Uh, really it's how, um, uh, how well that you, you can integrate within your own ecosystem of, of tech. So if you're already on WordPress, uh, you might want to explore, you know, other plugins or your own page builder, um, if you're on another system, maybe Unbounce might make it easier for you to create the page. So it's really uh, your own internal um, knowledge base and how, how uh, well, you know, how quickly you can get it up there yourself. If it was, uh, if it was your company, Jason, which tool would you use? Uh, would you tend to use for landing pages? Yeah, um, we build uh, through uh, WordPress. So basically, we would probably uh, use WordPress. Uh, and again, you don't have to do anything uh, additional to get the uh, tracking to work. So I would, that would be my preference. Uh, besides that, I would use uh, something like Unbounce. Gotcha. And the nice thing about Unbounce too is um, you know, Everidge being a Vancouver, BC based company, hmm. so is Unbounce. So we got to give them a, a little bit of a shout out here and some yeah. credit. So <laughs> sure. support the local tech scene. Yeah. And uh, in terms of the effectiveness of landing pages, you know, um, it, it, this question is difficult to answer because in, in terms of a, a broad stroke because it is so specific about um, the nature of the business and the website in particular, and there's just countless factors that go into this. But I'll provide a little bit of a, a rule of thumb regardless. So for a landing page for B2B, a, a decent conversion rate is going to be in the neighborhood of like 25 to 5%. Uh, it definitely can be lower than that, definitely can be higher than that, although not drastically higher. Um, but that, that's the reasonable neighborhood that you're going to be in. If we were to con compare that to the conversion rate for like a normal landing page, 
it's probably going to get probably going to be closer to like half a percent if, if the if the call to action at least is to get them to fill out a contact us form um so maybe oh, even did lower you, than that. did you mean a normal like a web page yeah oh sorry yes a normal web page yeah not a landing page so just a normal like services page or something like that right just the average page on your on your website it's going to be like half a percent so as a rule of thumb, you could say that the conversion rate for uh, for a landing page compared to a regular web page is about five to ten times uh, higher. And so, obviously, if you're getting five to ten times more results on 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 your campaigns, these are worthwhile to do. Um, you know, I, I sometimes I do run into clients who feel apprehension about creating landing pages. They feel like it's unnecessary, and they don't really understand the benefits of it. But I, Jason, I'd be curious about your thoughts too, but I feel like given the five to 10 times better performance can be expected, um, you know, there is a cost associated with these landing pages, but as long as your campaigns are spending like a decent amount, uh, they do add enough value to make them uh, worthwhile most of the time. Yeah, so um, it, all, it all boils down to what are the business goals of the company? If their goals are to increase the number of leads on a monthly basis, um, having an ad is just half the battle. Um, having a great landing page or uh, a page that converts that it leads to is the other half of that equation. And if you have great ads that, that people uh, can click on and also a great landing page where it actually converts, that's when you have the magic formula. And a lot of people discount the, uh, the web page part of it. Uh, they, they're usually, um, they think that a typical uh, contact us page or a service page with something on it might be good enough. Uh, but again, we, we see time and time again through the data that we collect through analytics uh, that having a specific landing page converts more. So why not have a, uh, a specific landing page for your ad uh, since you're paying, you're spending a lot of time um, creating campaigns for it anyways, we want to make sure that you get your, your ROI. For sure. Um, and, you know, one thing that uh, we can mention here too is an effective way to look at landing pages. And, and I'm thinking about MSPs here where quite often MSPs might have a few different geographic markets that they're targeting. Uh, obviously not too broad for most of them, but there might be a few different municipalities or whatever. Um, so if you, maybe you have advertising campaigns that are targeting those individual municipalities, well, you could create a template where it's the same landing page, but you just, at the very top, you just change the name of the municipality. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm in Vancouver, so I'll use Vancouver as an example. Maybe we have Vancouver managed IT services and then Richmond managed IT services. And this the, so you create a template and the page is the same, except for that one, you know, the name of the, the municipality. Uh, that can be a very effective way to do it because it helps tie in that um, kind of going to back to the very start of the presentation about storytelling, you know, having that continuity between the person who's clicking the ad and then, you know, landing on a landing page that speaks to them and it carries forward the, the information from the ad uh, that kind of makes a more of a conducive story uh, sort of a situation for them and uh, their experience is more, uh, more uh, aligned, I suppose. So um, that, that's a, a method that we typically recommend. Okay, well, that was everything uh, that we have planned today in terms of the question and answer that we had planned. And if there are any questions uh, from the audience, we would love to field them at this time. Maybe I'll just take a second here while people might be asking questions to say that um, if you are joining us from, from YouTube, uh, please feel free to click the subscribe button below. That would be great. We're putting out these uh, videos about once every three weeks or so. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that would be great. And I see Anna is raising her hand here. Um, one second. Oh, and, and I don't know if you're able to respond. I think I just gave you the, the microphone there. Testing microphone. Hi, Anna. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? It's good. Anna. Oh, sorry, Anna. Yes. 
Uh, my question is about the testimonial section. Currently on the homepage, we've designed a dedicated section towards the bottom of the page that has testimonials. I actually did some research on Unbounce too, and uh, so that it's better to kind of just sprinkle around the uh, testimonial uh, across the homepage as opposed to have a dedicated section. Um, would is it uh, how essential is it to redesign and remove that section like the testimonial on the bottom of the page and then in favor of spring either sprinkling it across the uh, let's say home page or whatever the landing page is um, or carrying over carrying that section over from the bottom to uh, let's say below the hero image what are your thoughts um, Jason, you might have some additional thoughts. My, my first thought is that there's probably different ways to uh, to go about it that would work fine. So I don't know. Um, it'd be worth A-B testing. I, I'm, my gut instinct is saying that the position of the testimonial on the landing page probably isn't going to have a drastic impact. So if you stay, stick to the rules of having kind of the main value proposition up the very top of the page, mm -hmm. there are different ways you could go about organizing the sections below. Um, so I'm not sure the specific order is going to have a huge impact on conversions. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, and generally sprinkling, sprinkling testimonials throughout the website is a, is a great idea. We definitely recommend that. Um, just uh, I, I would just draw the distinction again between a landing page, which isn't uh, typically able to be found from your web page, from your website uh, mm -hmm. versus know a, a normal web page which would be so it's a little bit of a different uh, a, a, a different objective I suppose mm -hmm. um, Jason do you have any uh, any thoughts on that yeah for sure so um, the home page is, is really interesting because you're trying to meet um, you're trying to meet many objectives by many different audiences so you want to you want to make the um, new visitors happy by offering you them a proposition the benefits right away and maybe have a testimonial just to show some social proof uh, for them. For people that know your company that visited before, uh, they want to take action right away. So having a button on there that says, you know, yeah. contact us right away will, will satisfy them. And for them, it may not be as important for a testimonial to be higher up because they already know you. Okay. So I think that's what uh, Unbounce is maybe of talking about, depending on the audience that you're addressing. If you're getting a lot of new visitors, and you can look through your analytics panel, if you're getting a lot of new visitors, maybe having a testimonial a bit higher up on the page could be beneficial, again, to show social proof and, and right. proof that, uh, you know, you're a business that people trust. Okay. Yeah, and, and I would say that, you know, the more testimonials, the better, right? Uh, they're, they're huge in B2B. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, just throughout the website on landing pages, in other marketing materials to even print marketing materials, uh, they're beneficial. Um, okay. Did that answer your question, Anna? Yes, and I have another one. Sure. Um, so when, um, for the book a consultation page that is quoted into the website, that's not like a landing page that the prospect is landing from the uh, ad. You've talked about removing any kind of extra navigation. So it's very focused because the prospect is not distracted. Um, so the contact form, the request consultation form that is embedded on the website and it's part of the menu navigation. Um, is it a good idea to remove like once, let's say like on a homepage or like from a blog page whenever a prospect clicks the CTA button and is taken to the contact page is that a good idea to remove all those extra navigation to just keep it kind of to the point uh, for them to fill out the form or, or keep, um, keep yeah, with, I, the, with the design? Yeah, I get it. I, I can feel this one. Um, so uh, what I've seen a lot of MSPs do and a lot of tech companies do is they separate contact form from uh, book a consultation. A contact form is typically in the navigation and the goal of the contact form uh, is to field any uh, outside questions, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily booking a consultation. That's a specific task that ideally you should separate out from your contact form and have a separate page for. And on that page, I do recommend uh, making it a bit, you know, uh, it's not 100% necessary 
if they're coming from the website, but um, you, you, know, you can or, or you can have a navigation or it's not 100% necessary because again, it's linked from your website itself. Mm -hmm. But I do recommend separating a contact, uh, a book a consultation from the general inquiries contact form. Because from there, uh, you may want to field only people that have questions about maybe employment or uh, something else besides booking a consultation. And that way you can actually separate out uh, the goals and make, making sure that um, you, you that the visitor understands if you click on book a consultation it's just the form is specifically for that and that mm -hmm. way you can keep track of your goals better than a general contact form mm -hmm. um, now if you're if you're stuck with if you're stuck with just having a contact form then i do recommend at least a drop down menu that mm -hmm. states you know uh, the topic or the subject so maybe uh, book a consultation might be one item on there but uh, it, the general rule is if it's on the website as a link, it should have the navigation um, on there. We do have both contact, uh, contact mm -hmm. us and the request consultation, and it's okay. also part of the menu. Yep. Um, they're also part of the you know, call to action button throughout the mm -hmm. homepage and blog pages and uh, yep. just across the site. So in this situation, I heard you about the contact page. So we keep the navigation. What about the request consultation page? Like uh, for example, if on the homepage, it's part of the menu, you click on it or part of the, you know, it's a call to action button, you click on it, then it's better to have just the uh, information relevant to the request and the consultation, removing the menu bar just on that page. Did well, I understand correctly? Yeah, I would, um, here's a strategy I would recommend. So uh, if you have a book of consultation uh, page specifically and mm -hmm. in the navigation um, I would keep the navigation there for that mm -hmm. uh, what you can do is also create another specific book of consultation page without the navigation and then use an ad to point to that and on that book of consultation page it'll be you'll you'll have a bit more detailed information it'll be tailored depending on who you're targeting as well so it could be specific for an industry for example so let's mm -hmm. say um, you have, you, you target uh, a specific industry. You can have a book a consultation page for a specific industry and create an ad for that and have a separate page. Um, now, uh, having more than one landing page is actually a, a good thing, having multiple landing pages because it allows you to segment who you want to target with it, with your marketing. And uh, I think this is a, a great discussion point, Anna. So thanks so much for bringing it up. And I, the thing that comes to mind for me, why do we get rid of the navigation for a landing page where you know, we're trying to get the contact information, but not for a page that's on the main site? For me, it comes down to just the expectation of the visitor of the site. So if, if someone clicks on an ad and they're sent to a landing page, like I think most people have had that experience now um, and it's, they're accustomed to it. It's not really strange, but if you were to be on a website and you click through a, a section, you know, after you're browsing the website for a little bit, and then suddenly you're not able to like go backwards. I think that would annoy people. Um, mm -hmm. I, so, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's just going to put the wrong taste in their mouth. Like, oh, they're, uh, well, actually the term is like dark patterns, right? You know, that's kind of the, mm -hmm. uh, the trendy word that you hear a lot where marketers try to get you into little, do little actions where, it's kind of underhanded towards getting sales. So um, I, I would be worried about the impression of kind of, you know, the almost like a bait and switch sort of a, a feeling to give to the, the visitor. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I don't think that that same feeling applies to like when you click a, an ad and land on the landing page. So to me, at least that's the big differentiator. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. I do have oh, another please. question. Sure, yeah, please. <laughs> well, you, you brought up a point about segmenting your audience when clicking on request consultation form from an ad. How would you do that? So the, it uh, the segment, segmenting would be aligned to the campaign settings. So you, you might have a, a different ad group or, or even a different campaign uh, targeting different, uh, different segments. And mm -hmm. then in the campaign settings, you would customize the, the landing pages URL to, to, to direct towards the one that you want. So for instance, let's say, I don't know, let's say you're, you're targeting, your main market is uh, greater uh, Toronto. 
Um, and then you're also maybe going out to, oh boy, I'm, I'm not going to show my Ontario geography very well here, but <laughs> let's, say, let's say a secondary market was like Thunder Bay or something. Okay. I, it's probably really far away, a bad example, but regardless, um, you know, you could have the same landing page for both uh, Toronto and Thunder Bay. Um, and, you know, the only difference being the name of the municipality and then the URL would be slightly different. And then, you know, have corresponding either campaigns or ad groups for those municipalities too that utilize that landing page? Uh, yes, so it would be the same landing page just used for different ads. I thought it would be a different kind of request consultation page depending on the industry or you know the geography you're segmenting. No, it's a, no, it's a cool thing you could do, um, mm -hmm. which isn't a, a ton of work, but in addition to changing the name at the top of the landing page, maybe you change the hero image. So maybe for Toronto, it's the you know CN Tower or something like that, right? Well, sure. Uh, and then, you know, maybe in different municipality, like Thunder Bay, I don't know, maybe it's the Terry Fox statue or something, right? Like just okay. something that's really identifiable to, to the people who are from that region. Okay. That so would be you, a good way to do it. So you can segment by geography, uh, which is a good tactic. And you can also segment uh, depending on uh, the industry. That's a little bit more difficult. It depends on which type of um, uh uh, campaign settings that you have um, it's it's a little bit easier to do on Facebook ads than Google ads um, and also you have to make sure that if you create a landing page let's say for attracting hospitals in Toronto and attracting um, let's say the mining industry or something you have to make sure that the landing page speaks to each um, each market and their, their pain points yeah. okay okay great thank you you're welcome. And just the other thing I wanted to mention to uh, Jason, you mentioned, I think it was actually the previous question, but you were talking about, um, uh, how, you know, the, the navigation on landing pages on the site and how you can have a contact us page um, and then kind of reutilize it for a landing page as well. And, and Jason, you mentioned to me earlier before, before the webinar that there are some plugins for WordPress that will help you um, strip away the, the navigation. So do you mind just elaborating a little bit about how that works? Yeah, for sure. So in WordPress, um, if you use a page builder, they usually have a template that's called a blank page. So you can actually use that uh, to build your landing page on that doesn't have the header or footer in there. So that makes it easier to create a new page. Uh, there's also other plugins that are specific for landing pages that you can generate from. And they have uh, all the tools, the drag and drop tools for you to create them uh, specifically. So there's a lot out there. All you have to do is uh, do a search for uh, landing page plug in WordPress in, in Google and you're good to go. Great. Well, thanks so much for the questions, Anna. That was great. And uh, thanks for everyone for attending. Um, if you are interested in getting in touch with Jason and, and I, here is the contact information for, uh, for eBridge Marketing Solutions and the host broker. And as I mentioned, if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe, that would be much appreciated. And uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. Have a great day. Take care.